You're listening to Parents You've Got This, the expert guide to parenthood. The complete guide to pregnancy, birth, baby and parenthood. As co-founder of Circle In and Well, Kate Pollard is perfectly placed today to talk to us all about parental leave. She feels passionately about supporting parents as they navigate this really exciting time and their return to work. So Kate, Thanks so much for joining us today to talk all about returning to work. Um, My first question is, what are the benefits of returning to work post baby? Look, I think there's so many benefits. Um, I think the thing I would say though, is when you're first going back to work, it actually feels really, really hard. Um, So I think you've got to think about the longer term. Um, There are so many longer term benefits of keeping your skills relevant. Um, If you don't go back to work, you know, you really lose your confidence the longer you're out of the workforce. Um, I know so many, um, particularly women who've been out for quite a long time, find it so hard, you know, like when the kids are older to try and get back in. It's not just about your skills though, it's also your connections, your networks, all of those things that you think about in terms of building a career. If you put those on hold for too long, it really makes it so much harder if you do at some point later want to return. So I think the other thing that's really important um, that often women forget about too is their financial independence. So if you don't invest in your career and you don't continue to build those skills, um, then you really are, you know, um, reducing down your financial independence. Um, And you do see a lot of women who have a lot a lot less superannuation yes. um, than, than men in particular, and it's because they spend a long time out of the workforce. So, you know, I just encourage everyone to think about, I know that the short term is really difficult, but the longer term benefits of returning to work definitely outweigh it. So, you know, just, um, you know, dig in and, and, you know, there's a lot of support out there too to help with that transition back. So what sort of things would you suggest that families put in place while they're planning their return to work to help to ease that transition when they actually start um, back in the workplace again? Yeah, I think with returning to work, a lot um, of good things can happen with the preparation. So um, if you're thinking about going on parental leave, make sure you have that parental leave plan in place with your manager. And that outlines how you want to stay connected on that period while you're away. And then while you're actually on leave, um, you might want to take the first bit where you don't really stay that connected because you just want to have time. You want to be in your own baby bubble and just enjoy the moment. But I think as you approach that return to work, it's really important to stay connected with your manager um, and try to get an update from them regularly about what's actually happening at work work um, you know you don't want to feel out of sight out of mind and if you sort of have a feeling for what's going on changes that have happened um, while you're away um, if you have that open dialogue it's just going to make your return so much easier and then as you return to work so you're getting much closer to that date when you um, you're talking to your manager about returning before you return make sure you've got that role clarity that your role has probably changed or will change when you return so um, I think it's really important to you know talk to your manager about what your role will look like uh, and then start to plan um, I guess step by step what your return would look like um, we always encourage people to put down a 90 day plan um, of what they will want to achieve in the first 90 days back Uh, and so that that means that you're really on the same page with your manager Um, and then once you're back you know schedule a like a three-month check-in to make sure that everything's actually working as as you planned it. And that can be sometimes a bit of a turbulent um, Mm. time because you don't know how you're going to feel about returning to work before you've got the baby. I think that's the hard part when you're planning, you know, maternity leave. You don't really know how you're going to feel and how that transition is going to go. So what are some of the ways that you can ease that transition? Yeah, Um, I think the first one, making sure you're clear on your role. So, so important. Um, When you know what's expected and you're on the same page with your workplace, that's so important. Um, I think it's also important to understand what support you need. So being really clear with your manager. I need this help I'm going to transition back like this you know just really keep that that communication open Um, I think you know again we sort of said staying connected is really important to keep those relationships going Um, and another really good tip um, that we've also implemented is start your childcare early yeah, that's um, a good don't one. leave that till the last minute um, because it's actually really heartbreaking. Like as most parents, the first time you put your child in childcare, you feel so guilty about it. Um, your, ch- your children will actually be fine, but it's just a transition for you and your child. Um, the other thing is before you return, you know, some practical things like get some food in the, you know, in the fridge. You know, so you can kind of, you know, not having to scramble around, you know, because that first few months back can be quite, um, I guess, a bit unsettling as you're trying to navigate, pick up, um, pick up some childcare. What are we going to eat tonight? So if you can get some stuff ready to go, I think that's a really good 
good thing to do. The other one we always recommend, um, and this might sound a bit silly, but you know, trying to have a dry run through um, the weeks preceding returning to work as well. Um, so you know, that whole routine of dropping your child off at childcare, you know, getting out the door, how long does it actually take? Where am I going to park? You know, all of that stuff, the practical stuff. If you actually have a couple of dry run throughs yes. when you actually come to the day of returning to work, you know, it'll just go a lot more seamlessly because you, you're prepared for it. And what about, um, so we're, t- we're talking about both men and women who might be taking parental leave and then returning to the workplace. Are your tips and suggestions the same for men and women, regardless of how long they've had off? Or are there any differences yeah. with men or women who are juggling this? Mm. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's broadly the same um, for both men and women. I think it actually depends more about the time you've had away uh, and how you've stayed connected. So I think, you know, just really, you know, being sensitive that it's going to be a transition, it's going to be challenging for both the mum and the dad or both, both mums or both dads. Um, it's just a, a, a transition period that everyone needs to adjust to. But, I mean, broadly the same things around logistics, you know, adjusting to childcare, adjusting to being back. Sometimes you're working flexibly. Like, there's just so much change. Um, so I think you just got to go a little bit gently on yourself as well um, and don't set your expectations too high. Um, just take it, you know, one step at a time. And do you have any tips around that juggle, you know, that push and pull feeling Mm -hmm. of trying to do everything for everybody and feeling a bit like you're dropping all of the balls or keeping one ball up but not the other one? How do you go about juggling, you know, working and having a family? Look, I think that's the biggest transition, right? It's just really hard and and it can often feel really overwhelming it can feel like um i guess that you can't do things how you used to be able to do them and it can often feel like you're sort of failing at everything yeah. you're just sort of running from one thing to the next and you've got no time for yourself and no time for your partner and you know like and it just feels it's so many conflicting emotions i think the thing is you just have to you know be really kind to yourself during this period um try and prioritize you know what's most important i think the key thing is you can't work like you were working before you actually have to work out a new way of doing it that works for you and your family so you know I think navigating that is really important and just you know just prioritizing what is the most important what's the next most important and I think there's also recognition that what works for one family isn't going to work for yours so just work out what works for you and your partner um you know and just you know try different things and um but yeah it's it's really hard to try and work how you used to work before um you need to get better at saying no (laughs) that's the other thing it is like so hard but you just can't um, you know, do things in the same way and you need to really prioritise and be able to say no. Um, I think the other thing which is really, really important is, and often we see this particularly with women, is that when they go on um, parental leave, they often assume all the domestic load, yes. you know, um, where it used to be shared in the, you know, in your relationship and then all of a sudden you're doing all the washing and then the washing goes through the roof because you've got, you know, a small child. And um, so I just really recommend right off the bat, um, if you're going back to work, make sure you divide up the domestic duties mm, um, because the more that you have on your plate and, you know, on your mind, you're going to have less time to be thinking about the stuff that's really important around your career. Um, so, you know, just really think about what works. Um, make sure it's not just all one way. Um, but, you know, different things work for different families as well and depending on the type of jobs that you have. But I really, really would, you know, try and share that load um, because I think a quality at home is really important. Um keeps everyone happy yeah. um I think the other thing is make sure make sure you make time for yourself like whether that's exercise catching up with your friends as hard as it is you you know you can't pour from an empty cup you need to look after yourself so that's really important um and I think the other thing is just generally you know try and be organized you know like if you can plan things out you just feel like you're more on top of things so Great, great tips. Yeah, mm. great tips, Kate. Um, what about when we're when we're thinking about our return to work and, and the flexibility and taking into account, you know, maybe our partners' work demands and home demands, how do we actually have the conversation with our workplaces around flexibility? And what are some of the things that we can be asking mm. for? I mean, I know that all the parents I know are just the most amazing multitaskers and actually the things that and the amount they can achieve in the shortest time is quite remarkable. But how do we actually have those conversations with our workplaces around the kind of flexibility that we might need when we return yeah oh you're spot on I think um, you know when you return to work flexibility becomes increasingly important um, and everyone understands that when you have a, you know children or small children that you know your number one priority isn't work all the time um, 
But I think with, with flexibility, the, the tricky thing with flexibility is it means different things to different people. Um, so people, you know, would assume that means part time or things like that, but it could mean a whole range of different things. And it means a different thing to your employer than it does to you. So I think yes. that the key thing to remember with, with flexibility is it's got to work on both sides. It's not just a one way street where you're like, I want this, I want this, I want this. It's like, how does that work for the business? How are you still going to you know, meet the requirements of your role? And then there's a nice sweet spot in the middle, but it's really important that you think about it from your workplace's perspective as well. And it's not just one way. And I think the more you can have a conversation with your manager thinking about that. Um, some people like to approach it as almost like a business case, almost like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then you sit down with your manager and you talk about what, what flexibility you'd like. And then you, you know, you negotiate and work out something that works for both of you. Um, but I think, you know, just think about it from a business perspective. Think about the different types of flexibility. It might actually be even worthwhile talking to some of your colleagues about the different types of flexibility that they have. It could be a compressed work week. It could be working part time. It could be job sharing. You know, there's lots of different types of flexibility to explore. So being really clear on what that is. Um, I think the other thing to remember it too is, is that in Australia, everyone has the right to request flexible working arrangements and your workplace has a responsibility to respond. So I would definitely, after you've had that um, chat with your manager about what flexibility you want, put it in writing and they legally have, a res um, you know, they need to respond with what, whether they can support that or not. And the onus is, predominantly on the workplace to say yes and make it work. Um, but I think it's really, you know, it shows um, a lot of respect for your workplace when you say, okay, let's put this in place for, you know, three months and then let's come back to it and check whether it's working for both sides. Um, you know, the, probably the worst thing you do see is when people return back to work and then they're trying to work five days in three. Yeah. And that's not fair and you're setting yourself up for, you know, for failure yeah, yeah. Um, and all you're going to end up doing is being really stressed out um, and, you know, you're probably not, your workplace isn't probably going to get the best out of you either because you're so frazzled and you're stretched so thin. So, you know, really having those good conversations around if you're working, say, three days a week, then the amount you can get done in three days is different to what you were doing in five days and don't feel like um, you as an individual because you are getting that flexibility that you can't ask to also be realistic about what's achievable. Um, you can't work how you worked before. You need to kind of work out a new way of doing it. Mm. And so Kate, do you have any final tips for our parents out there? You know, what do you wish every parent knew about returning to work? Yeah, I think the, the, the thing that's really challenging about becoming a parent, particularly a parent the first time, is really that identity shift. Yeah. And it just takes so long um, to kind of come to terms with. So. As, as I was sort of saying before around how you worked before, don't try and replicate that. You know, try and embrace you as a new person. Like it's quite confusing when you've gone from being, you know, in control of everything. You know, um, you can uh, be spontaneous and go out for dinner or you can stay back late and work. It's just not the same. So I think this identity shift when you move from being you as an individual to you as a mother or father, it takes them a while to adjust to. Um, so I think the thing is you just, you know, try and embrace you, the new you, um, and don't try and be a superhero and try and do everything. Try and be really, you know, um, realistic about what you can achieve and prioritise and things like that. Um, I think the other thing is there's power in knowing that everyone goes through this. Yeah. It is really hard for, for everyone um, and it's a transition. So, you know, try and look after yourself through that journey as well and, and seek support. And I think the, the most important thing is if you're not coping, put, you know, literally, you know, reach out to your family and friends. Also talk to your manager about it. Um, don't suffer in silence because the longer it goes on, you know, the more you just, you know, you're going to feel you know, like you're not coping and, and, and things like that. So it's really important to make sure you ask for help as well. Fantastic, Kate. Thank you so much for That's sharing right. that. It's really empowering and really encouraging, I think, for parents so they know that actually they've yeah. got options. And I love what you said about the fact it's got to work for the business as well as the individual and having those yeah. conversations and being open because you're right, your manager is not a mind reader. No. Um, so, you know, be kind to yourself, mm -hmm. lean on your partner, lean on those around you and keep it really open and honest with your employer as well. That's yeah. fantastic advice. A huge thank you to Mastella for sponsoring this episode. You've been listening to the Expert Guide to Parenthood and never forget parents, you've, you've got, got this. this. Join a Parents You've Got This Masterclass today to be prepared, excited and educated for pregnancy, birth, baby and parenthood. Visit www.parentsyou'vegotthis.com.au and sign up for a masterclass today.